A very good evening and welcome along to Veshprem Arena. We're all set for live coverage of our match of the week and what a match it is in the final round of the group phase of this machine, Seeker.com EHF Champions League. It is Telecom Veshprem against SC Magdeburg this evening. Magdeburg need to avoid defeat if they are to make it through to the quarterfinals automatically. Veshprem therefore must defeat the German side, the holders no less of this competition. It's a chilly one outside, as you would expect in early March in Hungary, but inside the arena it is packed out. 5,000 is the capacity of Veszprém Arena and there is not a spare seat in the house tonight. They know what they need to do for the home side. The equation is very simple, win, and they will be joining Barcelona in the last eight of the Champions League. Anything other than that, and Veszprém will have to go through to the playoff round, essentially a last 16 tie if they are to make it through to the quarterfinals and then latterly on to where everyone wants to be, Cologne, Lanxis Arena for the final four. Magdeburg are the team that everyone wants to beat this season after they triumphed in Cologne last year. Magdeburg are on this incredible streak as well in the Champions League, having sustained their two defeats in the opening two rounds of this group phase. They've not lost since, so it's 11 wins and counting for the German side in the Champions League. But they still have one more job to do here. One of the fiercest atmospheres that you can encounter in the European game. First out, the away side, the holders of the MachineSeeker.com EHF Champions League. And they have a big task on their hands tonight if they are to avenge that 28-33 loss to Veszprem back in round one. A reminder of the other fixtures going on tonight. Barca almost certainly are going to top Group B. However, there is a circumstance whereby if Barca were to lose to Montpellier and Magdeburg were to get a draw tonight, Magdeburg could yet top the section, but it does look like it's Barca's to lose on that score. Plenty of quality in the Magdeburg ranks. But they know that they will have to not only compete against Telekom Veszprem tonight, but also the home crowd, who will be very vocal, as they always are, but even more so at this stage. Veszprem are the nearly men of the Champions League, four times finalists. They've never won this. Contrast that to Magdeburg, who have twice, who have four times been in the final, rather, and won on every single occasion, including last year, when they won for the first time in more than two decades. Magdeburg out on court. We now await the arrival of the home heroes, led first by Omar Yaya and Veszprem packed full of talent, including that French contingent fresh off their Euro win as well earlier this year. The big screen is ploughing on regardless, listing the players as they come out. But we're yet to see the likes of Patrick Ligetvari et al, he who's a, a local hero. One of the rare examples of a Hungarian player in this side multinational group of players brought together to try and finally get them over the line in this competition. Will this year be their year? Bennett Wiegert, who's the Magdeburg head coach, has said that whilst it would be a good result for Magdeburg to even make it through to the playoff round, he is conscious of the fact that very rarely has a team gone on to win the Champions League having progressed via the playoff round. So that could be a crucial component to consider when it comes to the team's respective chances of going on to win this competition, which is the most prized trophy in European club handball. Well, 
this is a slight glitch in the running order or the schedule or whether it's all part of the mind games to try and have Magdeburg just stewing out there on court. We do have our officials out there as well. But it looks like we are finally ready for Veshbrem Arena to acclaim Telecom Veshbrem. It is the turn of uh, Omar Yaya. Hugo Desca next out. One of the two goalkeepers, Rodrigo Corrales, who's made 82 saves thus far. Andres Nilsson out after his compatriot Lucas Sandel. Moving back to his native Sweden at the end of the season, Andres Nilsson. So, how he'd love to. Bow out with some silverware here. Mike Jensen is the other man between the sticks, formerly of Magdeburg. And Bjarke Ellison, who spent nearly a decade in the Bundesliga, he will know what to expect tonight of the opponents. Look at that, he has mentioned. Childhood fan of Veshbrem. So he bleeds red, quite literally. Maybe Renili, who was the most valuable player at the recent Euro. His compatriot, Colta Maé, who will be on his way at the end of the season. And another of the Egyptian pair this time, Yeya Eldera. They tend to share the goals around. Weiler Pau has 33 to push Malbec's 37. Casado has already chipped in with 35 goals in this season's Champions League. There's another of the French lot, Ludovic Fabregas, and finally Sergei Kosatov, the last out for Telekom Veshbrem. And Momo Ilic, once a player here, and now a coach. to back up and we are just moments away from throw off here and now we start to hear Veshbrem Arena making itself heard trying to do their bit en route to a Veshbrem win which would see them supersede Magdeburg leapfrog them and put their place into the quarterfinals directly wall of noise here. Veshbrem have been beaten three times thus far. Hence why they find themselves on 20 points, two adrift of Magdeburg at the start of play. A quick recap of the two sides then. Veshbrem will of course be turning to the man that's got the bulk of their goals, Nedim Remili with 66. Oh, Momo Ilic would love to make it two wins out of two against Magdeburg this season. And the Magdeburg side. Felix Klar has scored 56 goals. Omar Magnussen with 70, but they're bolstered certainly by the return of Kisli Christiansen, who scored that all-important buzzer beater last time out against Barca. That was the most recent match of the week. Bennett Viget, the man who guided Magdeburg to last season's Champions League. And there are Portuguese brothers, Daniel Acoto Martins and his brother, Roberto. is on but this is why they're in the game this is why we love 
top level handball for atmospheres such as these in Veshbrem. But also, once you get to the business end of the European season, it's all about keeping your cool. Magdeburg certainly did that last season en route to winning the Champions League. Beat Barcelona on penalties in the semi final at the final four. And they beat Kielce in extra time, so they are used to going the distance. This will be settled in 60 minutes. A draw would be enough for Magdeburg, lest we forget. Veshbrem have to win tonight if they are indeed to finish in the top two and therefore avoid that awkward two-legged playoff round. It is a match of the week by name, match of the week by nature, that's for sure. Win or bust for Veshbrem in terms of making it through automatically. We are up and running then at Veshbrem Arena and Magdeburg will have the first possession of the game. Over the place, just getting a feel for the ball, evenly distributing that resin around it. And now we can get underway in earnest. Smarison playing in that playmaker role. See who steps towards the line. Magnussen shut down. Smarison trying to force his way through. Good defense there from Veshbrem. Apologetic hand up from Fabregas. Always want to get that first score on the board just to settle your nerves. Smarison for Klar. Again, the Veshbrem home crowd and the players up off the bench. Saluting the defensive work there of Fabregas. Breaks the way of Salstrup, who bounces it over the top. No early score for Magdeburg. Slightly fortuitous in the way the ball broke to the Dane, but he couldn't finish it. Yeah, yeah, Omar. Does get the seven meter throw just when Sergei Hernandez thought he'd done his bit by keeping out the effort, he'll have to do it all again. And that's why Matthias Musha stepping back into the seven meter area. That was the effort from Salstrup. There's Yay Omar off the post, so neither side yet to get on the board. Bit of nerves, perhaps, early doors. Salstrup bouncing one over. And Omar Yaya striking the upright. Relief for Sergei Hernandez. So Magdeburg will have the chance once again to get this first score going. Smaris and he's given it away. And now the transition should have been on for Eldera. Instead, it's wasteful again from Veshbrem. And if you were in any doubt as to how high the stakes are, you've just seen it in the opening passages of play. Two and a half minutes gone, and finally we get the game's first score. It is so Mark Magnussen with it. Should be the equaliser, indeed it is. Ludovic Fabregas equalises for Veshbrem. His contribution will be so important at both ends of the court. Veshbrem won't want Magdeburg to build too much of a lead. Another look at that clever pass from Remini to his compatriot. That's what happens when you not only play together at club level, but also for your country. An innate understanding. <laughs> Threat of passive play looms large here for Magdeburg. Liget Vari doing a really good job there on Omar Magnussen to stop him in his tracks. Kla now has to shoot, does shoot. Brilliant save that from Mike Jensen, just with the trailing leg to keep it out, and he turns toward the hordes behind the goal to celebrate with them. And that triggers 
the collective chart of Veshbrem. That's wonderful goalkeeping, using full extension of his legs there to keep it out. And Mike Jensen now taking the opportunity just to have a chat with his fellow goalkeeper, Rodrigo Corrales. Veshbrem looking to seize the momentum early on here. Remili stepping in and finding the corner. So quick was his left arm there that the goalkeeper completely unmoved. Magdeburg now looks to respond immediately. It's two of the Frenchmen so far on target. Fabregas first for Veshbrem and latterly Remili. Look how quickly he got that shot away. Sergei Hernandez was wrong footed, but either way, even if he'd seen it coming, I'm not sure he would have kept it out. Such was the speed with which he executed that shot. Remini. Here's Smarison. Nice drop of the shoulder. Salstrup on a swivel at the line. The first two minutes suspension of the game is the way of Patrick Bigetvari. So this from a man light now for two minutes. Didn't release the player. Just there as Salstrup turned. He knew he was in the wrong there. Ligit Vardy tried to relinquish the hold and put his hands up to plead his, his innocence, but didn't quite succeed on that score. The official's not been duped. That's nicely done. Salstrup, there's the save from Jensen, but he won't collect the rebound. Felix Clark quickly there to force it home. Clark now takes his tally in this season's Champions League to 57. That was a really big save again from Jensen. He's just unfortunate that the ball broke perfectly to a player in a white shirt as opposed to a red. Half a dozen minutes gone at Veshbrem Arena. Nothing to choose between the two sides. A pair of goals apiece. Again, Remy Lee looking to inject some pace. He was knocked off balance there by O'Sullivan, who now will join Liget Valley in getting a two-minute suspension. So with 60 seconds or thereabouts having elapsed of the Veshbrem two-minute suspension, now it's the turn of the Magdeburg captain, Christian O'Sullivan. So we now have six place six. Veshbrem still going with the empty goal, so they need to be cautious here for possession. Remili nicely done, the Kemper comes off perfectly. And uh, Veshbrem now getting the crowd on their feet. Hugo Disca makes it a French hat-trick. So spectacular. There's Kemper's two players perfectly in sync. Is Magnuson then unable to escape the attentions of Fabregas. Felix Clark gets his second in a row. We're all tied up at three. Just found a pocket of space there, Felix Clark, and that's what allowed him to go the low route, conscious that there's a long way for Jensen to get down, especially that close to his body. Remili forcing it wide, Vilepau steps in off the wing and hits the post, they've struck both posts now. Oh my yay earlier on from the seven metre line this time, it was Nikita Vilepau. Put it to Sergei and just stepping across there, which made the angle increasingly tight. Fine margins. Now Magdeburg's turn to have the empty goal, albeit only for another 10 seconds or so. Smarison. Found himself very close to his teammate in the end, Magnus Saustrup. Who this time last year had an awful injury, but he did return in time to be part of the Champions League winning side at Lanxess Arena in Cologne. 
Klaar wants his hat trick, doesn't get it. Jensen with a huge save. Too many steps either way, so we will restart with the Veshbren ball. Not sure that save will go down as part of his official count. But one for the cameras nonetheless. Shake of the head from Bennett Viget. Tip for tap so far. Neither side has enjoyed anything more than a one goal lead at any stage of it. Oh my, yeah, he has shot. Well saved by Sergei Hernandez. Gets the acclaim of his teammates on the bench, and Magdeburg come forward in search of a quick goal their own way. Magdeburg thought about the shot. And goes back with O'Sullivan, who's back amongst us after serving that two minute suspension. Quick change allows Liget Vadi to get back on, but not before Musha buries it to make it Magdeburg four, Vesprim three. Remy Lee did just sneak in, despite the best efforts of Sergei Hernandez. And another quick-fire goal, this time it was the bullet left arm of Magnussen. He having scored Magdeburg's first goal, gets their most recent strike as well. Five... Four to the German side. So Yaya's effort kept out by the goalkeeper. Going to be disappointed with that one there. Letting it through from Remy Lee will Sergei Hernandez because it was straight at his body, somehow managed to creep between his legs. Scoreboard in the arena is now caught up with us. It is Veshbrem 4, Magdeburg 5, but Hungarian side on the offensive. Yeah, yeah, that was loose. Remy Lee did well to pick it up and then find Fabregas looped in beautifully. Such poise for such a huge man. Two for two for Ludovic Fabregas. It's not all about brawn and power handball, there's also finesse, as evidence there from Fabregas just floating the ball beautifully over the top. Shabala, I think that's cool. Vailapal taking it well, then he was manhandled, the meat and the sandwich. Took one for the team there, but conscious that he was on his way to goal. Took well to trap back there and just block him off, Smadison taking the brunt of the contact. Yeah, that's Remy Lee. Another good save from Sergei Hernandez. Yeah, yeah, held it up. That's the man who unleashed it. Now Clark, open shot for him. And it goes, but... The whistle had already gone. That was the save from Sergei Hernandez, the left arm shooting out. Just there, the foot was down before the pass came through. Clark. Did really well to disguise that shot there. Looked like he was going to try and loop it up to a teammate. Instead, Felix Clark brings up his hat trick. It's good Magdeburg back the lead and they've made a save. And now they're clean through for 7 5. Yes, Christian O'Sullivan with it. Two quick goals there for Magdeburg. Sergei Hernandez certainly playing his part. The goalkeeper's save percentage is right up there. And 
Islanders currently with three saves from eight shots at 37.5%. He can maintain those sort of numbers. Magdeburg could well be onto a winner here. More wasteful possession from Veshbrem. Chance for a three-goal lead here. Omar Yehia came back. It's an important steal. This is Veshbrem. We're beginning to lose momentum now. Nadine Remini is saying the ball is a bit flat. Let's change it. And a quick chance for Mamo Ilic to have a word with some of his troops. Easy for the rotations now. That's what it so often comes down to, Sergei Hernandez being rounded up to 38% compared with the two saves from nine shots from Mike Jensen. That's why Magdeburg have a two-goal cushion, it's not much, it can easily be whittled down, it can be eliminated in seconds indeed, but they won't want it to grow too much bigger, especially to move towards the 15-minute mark. Sandel on for the first time tonight. Here he is again. Need to get a shot away sooner rather than later. Veshbrem, they do that. And Sergei Hernandez deals with it comfortably. Had a long time to watch that before getting his full body behind it. O'Sullivan keeps it moving. Clara again. There's another goal for him. Takes his personal tally to four. And Magdeburg now do lead by three. Felix Clark filling his boots. Was the problem it was a low percentage shot from Yeye Eldera but as soon as he saw the officials five fingers come up passive play was moments away he realized that he needed to shoot or lose or risk losing the ball Remili there it is it's what Magdeburg need for him to step up and need all of their big players indeed to make their contribution but some are more significant than others Remini has now scored half of Veshbrem's six goals. Midway through this first half, Magdeburg, where they'd like to be in the lead, they'd love to be there come the 60-minute mark. But that's a handling error there from Smarterson, and now Vilepal dashing forward, Pesh Malbec. Just about kept out by Sergei Hernandez. Just took his eye off the ball there at the crucial moment, did Janus Smarterson, and that's what allowed Veshbrem to come forward. Significant changes now. On the offensive side of things for Veshbrem, they've given it away though. Sandel, a little bit profligate in possession there, Lucas Sandel. All the time in the world for Salstrup to bury it. The defence went missing there. An inquest going on in the Veshbrem defensive ranks. That was far too easy for Magnus Salstrup. And again, they restore their three goal cushion. So. For a timeout, Feshbrim. Speaking about this, what's happened? Nothing. Result is okay. We just need, just need faster ball. Now in the situation, what I need? Seven direct, you and Dera. Ten, seven direct. Situation, put a pivot here. Dera, thinking if it's ever. Thinking if it's ever, we need one more to score now. In front this game, two against two. Okay? I go down, I come for the block. Guys, when we're running back, Run straight! Yeah. Stop changing! If you're in the middle, you run straight! We don't care! Hey, 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 We saw Momo Ilic there asking his side just to move the ball a little bit quicker. Mimili's stepping in as well and saying, why are we running back? Run straight.
Fresh Brent need a score here. They won't want Magdeburg to get into double figures with them still lagging behind on six. There's Remili again stepping in and again scoring. It's the Remili show so far. Doing so much of the heavy lifting for Veshbrem. This is why he came in with 66 goals. He's already taken his tally up to 70 now in this season's Champions League. He said recently, I've won a lot with France, but I really want to win the Champions League. I almost feel guilty I haven't done it yet. So whether he can channel that feeling of culpability into a championship run remains to be seen. But the first step will surely be here tonight in Veshbrem. It's all about them defeating Magdeburg, making a statement by doing the double in this group phase over the holders. Taking their place with Barca directly in the quarterfinals and then just two legs away from a place in the final four and they weren't last season or whether you before Clark Rakegren is now on need to get the shots away here to Magdeburg they've lost the ball that's better from Veshbrem forcing the mistake slowing down their opposition this time Remini Another two minute suspension. Time might be turning here. Let's ask you what he did wrong there. Mikhail Damgaard. But all of a sudden, a bit of momentum shifting the way of Veshbrem. Hugo Deska is the man over this seven meter throw. And we've seen the previous one by Omar Yahya miss. They need to score this. Diska doesn't deliver. It's another miss. And had they put those two seven-metre throws away, we'd be talking about a nine-all scoreline. Instead, Magdeburg still have the cushion, albeit now they have to make it through the next two minutes or so with a player light. But Sergei Hernandez unmoved, and somehow the effort just flashed off target. Obviously, Christiansen is on. So it's uh, Oscar Bergendahl, in fact, in the end, as opposed to Mikael Damgaard, who got the two minute suspension. Christiansen, nicely done. Salstra never misses those. Back to that goals now for Magnus Salstra, but Remy Lee at the other end. Easily dealt with by the Magdeburg back line. Despite having that two minute suspension, they got the score, and not only that, but Sergei Hernandez keeps making the saves. That was facilitated by the work of his colleagues in front of him, it must be said. So far, so very good for Magdeburg. Not relinquishing this three goal cushion. Christiansen. Oh, held up well by Peshmal there. And then the Illich just belie, uh, below us, motioning for his team to shut down the space in the middle. Fast break here, open goal for Deska. Couldn't score from seven metres, he wasn't going to miss that with no opposition. That's what you need, make the most of those two minute suspensions. Magdeburg didn't take precious care of the ball, and Hugo Deska grabs his second of the night. And Bennett Viga has also been given a yellow card, presumably for saying too much. Casado pulled his arms back, and then once he picked up the ball, spotted he had a teammate up court. It's just a case of passing on the baton to Disca, which he managed. the intensity the fans behind the goal that they're defending but instead it's a miss 
Well, he was clean through there, Albin Lagergren. And yet, blinked in the face of Mike Jensen. Swede, out Fox by the day and seemed to brush the post on the way through. Thumbs up from Jensen. There's a hulking figure, one soft Magdeburg. Short spell with Benfica as well. Casado. It's better from Bergendahl. Two thirds of the first half have elapsed. Remy Lee feeding it through Peshmalbek. Despite Peshmalbek playing internationally for Serbia, they are both native French speakers there, Remy Lee and Peshmalbek. The latter has spoken in the past about how useful it is to be able to outfox domestic rivals in Hungary by speaking French to the likes of Koltamaye. Still kept the ball there despite again being denied by the frame of the goal. Veshprim come in search of a route back into the match to cut this deficit back down to one goal. At one stage it stood at three. Will it be one? It will, because Casado threads it into the corner. Agustin Casado's first of the night did that beautifully. He was playing down the comparisons with the fact that Veshprim won the reverse fixture between these two sides. He said, yes, we played very well in Germany, but no two games of handball are alike. This match will be completely different. So far, it's very tight. Not that we expected much different here, given the sheer points tally that they possess. Veshprim with 20, Magdeburg with 22, the same number as Barca, in fact. Then it, Viga expressed surprise at how high the points tally is. In fact, they're not already clear. Musha gets another goal. But they hit back immediately. Casado with back to back goals to bring Veshpren back to within one. Still they chant. Clock has been stopped briefly. We've got seven and a half minutes remaining in this first half. Magdeburg surged ahead in that run from 4-3 up all the way through now to 11-10. On a couple of occasions they had a three-goal cushion. It's been whittled down to one. Janssen trying to make something happen. It's broken the way of Musha, but the whistle had gone just when he pounced on the ball and thought he was in business. Matze Musha, long-time servant of this club. He's a local lad as well, came through the youth system in Magdeburg, so he'll be delighted to see them back on top of European handball again. Christiansen. Couldn't force it through. Now a chance to equalise for Veshbrem, which looked unlikely just a few short minutes ago. Kosorotov is on, Sandel has a bit of space, which he exploits to the maximum. And that gets the crowd going. Lucas Sandel makes an 11 apiece. You could feel the momentum shift there as the ball went awry. Just there was a lovely little step inside. Which afforded him the space, and once he had that space, he wasn't going to waste it far from it. Now the pressure is back on Magdeburg to try and retake the lead. Smarterson. We get Valley pounced on the loose ball there. Took remarkably quickly. Timeout 
called now by Magdeburg, and you can understand why. From 9-6 and 10-7, 8-5 before that, it's now 11 apiece. Das ist Pech, dass wir ins Halbspiel kommen, weil sie uns das nicht geben. Zum Schluss ist es aber so, wenn Gisli den Ball hier bei dir wegwirft, haben wir keine Chance, uns zu verteidigen. Wir sind zwei. Bitte, wir haben jetzt ein 1 4 lauf gegen uns. Okay? Wir müssen etwas direkter vorne werden. Wir sind jetzt bitte mit Mika hier, mit Gisli hier, mit Albi hier. Bitte, gib mehr. Sorgt für mehr Rauf. Gib mehr Klarheit bitte in den wegziehenden Aktionen, um dann Raum zu kreieren. Ich finde ein Jugo weiter gut. Ein Jugo plus Isolation auf drei und weiter. Ein Jugo plus Ausgleich. Well, one positive to take out of Feshbrink's performance so far was the graph that we saw there, that they haven't yet conceded a seven-meter throw. They've earned two of their own, albeit they haven't taken either of them. Profligate with those penalty throws. All those come back to haunt them as the evening wears on and stark comparison there between Sergei Hernandez with 31% save rate. Jensen's only kept out two of 13 attempts, so he needs to boost that. It's actually almost a remarkable scoreline when you consider it's 11 each and yet one goalkeeper has saved less than half of what his opponent has managed, but there you go. And we might at one stage see Spanish goalkeepers in both nets, rivals for the national team. Sergei Hernandez benefiting from a shoulder injury to Rodrigo Corrales to be in the squad at the Euro. Passive play might just be an eventuality, but no. Matias Lucia scores again. He's had a flurry of goals now. Three from three. It's just what you want. Well, afforded an opportunity. Doesn't miss. Again, the onus is on Veshprem to try and respond. Casado for Kosoratov. Sergei Hernandez again returns to the party. Lovely bit of handling there from Tim Hornke to collect the loose ball. Bennett Liga again sends on his big guns in the offensive sphere. This was Kosorotov with the shot, but that for Sergei Hernandez is a comfortable stop. Nice height, just stepped across, didn't need to do a lot. Need to be better at Veshprem if they are to get the better of the Spaniard. Russian born. Jensen, it's only his third save, but he celebrates it nonetheless. Again, it wasn't the most difficult stop to make, but you still have to keep them out. Casado held up well. Algegren this time stopping in his tracks. These are the all important minutes of this first half. Yes, it's not terminal if a team makes a mistake. Casado did anything but there. Successful throw into the corner, dozen goals each. Now it's the turn of Sergei Kosonatov to get on the score sheet. But if you can go in leading by one or level, as opposed to trailing by a couple, that can make the difference in the long run over the 60 minutes. That was a little bit sloppy initially. Nothing sloppy about the finish. of the week, it's what we wanted, a tight game with high stakes, the stakes couldn't be any higher, one team will be going through to the quarterfinals directly, just when Magdeburg thought they'd lost the ball, they get a reprieve from the officials, and one team will have to go via the playoffs, and after Magdeburg edged out Barca with that buzzer beater late on from Christiansen, now it's 12 each, nothing to choose between this pair as we approach the half-time interval. Again, the hand is up from the officials, so passive play is coming soon. Unless they can get the shot away. Need to show some intent here. Christensen tries to do just that. That's a really good finish under pressure. From 
Kisli Christiansen. Great to see him healthy again. Believe it or not, that is his first goal of tonight. The elevation there. To hammer it down into the corner, quite impressive, especially consider the pressure on that. You know that you have to shoot, otherwise the officials will provoke the turnover. Casado. In it goes, with a bit Fabregas again. Team's beginning to thrive as we move towards the half-time interval. Christiansen, Jensen made the stop with his foot. Touch and go, the signal from the officials there, it was a matter of inches. Now oh, Ilic Charsky is best, just to slow it down, catch their breath and methodically pursue a lead here to move into the final 90 seconds of the first half. Slow rotations before they try and increase the tempo. Sandel for Kosorotov and now Casado. Easy save for his compatriot there. Narrowed the angle convincingly, Sergei Hernandez. Magdeburg quickly up the other end, but it catches the frame of the goal. Christian O'Sullivan. Nagagran there, lofted it beyond the goalkeeper, but not under the bar. Thirteen each. Might just be time for one more score each. Or it could be a score and a save. Or none at all. We shall see. Casado. Sandel working off him. Kosorotov, we've already seen the power he possesses. Fabregas trying to turn. Kosorotov. The disguise. Eventually Fabregas shoots, and he does so convincingly into the roof of the net. Two in a row for Ludovic Fabregas and Veshman might well have the half-time lead unless Magdeburg can find an equaliser in the next 10 seconds. Klar, Klar again, and they have got the goal. Big one too from Oscar Bergendahl just before the buzzer. Well, it couldn't be any tighter than that. Nil-nil to begin with, and after 30 minutes of play, Oscar Bergendahl Following up this finish from Fabregas, Fabregas had made it 14-13 to Veshbrem, but there was still time for Magdeburg to respond, just when they thought that was a half-time cushion. So Klar fed Bergendahl, a quick shot between the legs of Mike Jensen, and that is why, after 30 minutes of play, there is nothing to choose between these two teams, just two points after 13 matches. And in this round 14 match of the week, it is as close as they come and as we hoped it would be, because our half-time score reads Feshprem 14, Magdeburg 14.
Welcome back out to Veszprem Arena, where it is 14 apiece between Telecom Veszprem and Magdeburg after 30 minutes. Very tight indeed, this game. Magdeburg at one stage had a three-goal lead in the first half, several times indeed, 8-5, 9-6, 10-7. But eventually, Veszprem found a bit of momentum. All that, despite Mike Jensen not making too many saves, despite then spurning two efforts from the seven-meter line. And all that in the face of Sergei Hernandez, the Magdeburg goalkeeper, who's been keeping out plenty of shots, almost a third of the efforts that he has faced. And yet Magdeburg will be scratching their heads and wondering how Veszprem are level. But there are 30 minutes to decide who from Group B will be joining Barca directly in the quarterfinals of the Machineseeker.com EHF Champions League. We are back underway in Hungary. Veszprem seeking that all-important victory over Magdeburg to end their streak. A reminder, Magdeburg lost at home to Veszprem in round one, 28-33. They were beaten in round two at Barca, 32-20. But since then, 11 straight wins in European competition, which leaves them on the cusp of qualification. But they're not there yet. This scoreline, incidentally, would be enough for Magdeburg to progress. A draw tonight. And they would be the team finishing in the top two. But the first attack of the second half is with the home side. And as ever, Nedim Remili, the chief threat for Veszprem. So much of the play goes through him. Especially with so much pressure on Fabregas at the line. Here he is forcing it wide. And the shot goes into the top corner from Nikita Heilepal. score and Kita Vilepau darting inside big confident step to his left to open up the angle and then fist it past Sergei Hernandez it's a good save from Jensen is that the turning of the tide but that was a mistake there defensively ball went loose Jensen with the save didn't make too many of those in the first half that was good reflexes from him and not helped out by his defenders being too quick to try and seize upon the loose ball. Magnussen stepping in, gets it back again. Magnussen went the low route, that was the right route. Omar Magnussen. Three from three for him. There's another save from Sergei Hernandez. Just continues to contribute. Thumbs up from him, very cool customer. Had a good look at it, wasn't the cleanest shot from Omar Yahia. Didn't really generate the power because the shooting arm was a little bit obstructed by the opposition defenders and the bounce took some pace off the ball as well. Smarason, in it goes, I've got another one here. Janus Smarason gives Magdeburg the lead for the first time in the second half. Then nearly impeded there. It's all about desire from Smadison. So again, Magdeburg looked towards Sergei Hernandez. Emma Illich, a word. A member of his staff as to what the best game plan might be here for the home side.
Desperate Brem now attacking the most vocal portion of their support where all the drummers are assembled. Remy Lee, Eldera, good save again from Sergei Hernandez. That's just reading the game. Spotted the way the shot was going, stepped across and let his body do the rest. Big figure to get past. He might be an early contender for player of the match. And then I tries again this time, he finds the winning formula. That was more like it from Yehia Eldera. And Jensen with an all important save to deny Omar Magnussen. That's more like it, he's getting that percentage up now. This was Yehia Eldera, wrong foot in the goalkeeper. That's what you need in handball, those quick one-twos. You score at one end and then your goalkeeper steps up at the other. He wasn't sure where the ball was headed after he thrust out that left arm. He was hoping it wouldn't loop over his head and into the net. And eventually got the memo from the fans behind the goal that all was fine. There was a deflection there off Magnus Salstrup last, which is why possession will be reinstated to Veshbrem. So they go in search of another lead here. 14 all at the break, 16 all early on in this second half. But they've lost it, at least they thought so. Apologetic hand up from Christian O'Sullivan, the huge experienced figure. Remy Lee, Eldera, caught in two minds, lost the ball, and here come Magdeburg. Christian O'Sullivan, Musha was there, instead it's with Magnussen. Veshbrem have reassembled that defensive line. Then they go with the, well, they were pondering the seven on six there with the empty goal. Instead, Sergei Hernandez does lurk by his goal. There's Jensen with another stop, make himself big. More than two metres tall, and now he's starting to show it. Remind everyone of his colossal stature between the sticks. Smarison got a hand to the face there, one under the chin. And a word of warning there for Medin Remini. So the next time he does it, Portuguese officials might sanction him more extensively than that. As it is, it's a two-minute suspension, which will leave Veshbrem shorn of arguably their best player. And here's why. Went right round the scruff of the neck there on Janus Smarason. It's a chance for Magdeburg now to seize the initiative. Omar Magnussen found the angle, found the finish. He's chipped in with two of their three second half goals, so Ingi Magnussen. Considered the shot there, just waited, a slight pause. That's what allowed him to fist the ball beyond the reach of the goalkeeper. Jensen would want another attempt to keep him that out. But he has improved since the break. No danger of Corrales coming on to take goal. Sergei Hernandez got his angles all wrong. That was a chance for him, a big chance too. Not an easy finish, but nor was it particularly taxing. It's just a case of keeping it straight. In the end, he overshot it. Jensen sat on the bench, the ball broke the way of the Spanish goalkeeper. Illich was already lamenting the fact that Veshbrem didn't get the decision, but in the end, it's a big reprieve there. And in a game of such fine margins, with the scoreline 17-16 to Veshbrem, the chance for Sergei Hernandez to make it 18-16 would have been all important. Instead, he's wasted that chance. Ye yelled it up. Here's his compatriot. Nicely done, Fabregas forces it home, 17 each. Ludovic Fabregas picking up the slack with Remini still on the sidelines. And as you spoke about the importance of Sergei Hernandez, certainly Fabregas thus far in the early conversation as to who might be the key performer tonight. That's a nice goal, beautifully constructed, Smarison there, able to collect the ball. It's been an all Icelandic show so far in this second half for Magdeburg. Two for Magnussen, and now two for Smarison.
Lucia, returning provider, had the awareness just to tee up his colleague. And that was Fabregas Paris passing it between the legs of the opposition goalkeeper. Remy Lee is back amongst us, having served that two minute suspension. What a fucking finish that was from Ye Eldera. Now it's 18 all. Southrup, Jensen makes the save. One Dane denies another. Keshbrin knew that he would have to improve his output if they were to get the better of Magdeburg over the long haul. And Andreas Nielsen is leading the cheers from the sidelines. That was the finish first from the Egyptian for Veshbrem and then Southrup thought he'd spotted an angle in the corner. Jensen had other ideas. You don't need to speak Hungarian to join in on that chart. Veshbrem, Veshbrem, but instead Remini's shot easily gathered by Hernandez. Another save for him. And it's the German team on the offensive, wide for Magnussen. Back inside for O'Sullivan, fizzed around Musha again with a wry smile because there wasn't enough pace on it for him to step in off the left wing. Barely seen any of Tim Hornker on this near side, the right wing, instead it's with Magnussen. There's Jensen again. Now a chance for Veshbrim to take the lead for the first time in this second half. Mike Jensen coming to the fore. Remini slams on the brakes. The crowd sense that Veshbrim starting to edge out their opponents here. Safe percentage up to 31% all told for Veshbrem, still 36% for Magdeburg. Hernandez still has the edge and that will help him keep it too. Not sure whether it caught him or the frame of the goal or a combination of both last, but here come Magdeburg again, charging up court. Smarterson back on to play playmaker. Quick word there with Felix Klar. Here is Smarterson and Magnussen. Home crowd, what passive play. Now the hand comes up from the officials. Smarterson, Klar. Very neatly taken by Felix Klar. He is so prolific. It's wasteful from Veshbre. Musha scores. Two on the bounce there for Magdeburg. How costly could that be for Veshbrem? Matthias Musha with now four from four, and he's hurt himself in the process there. But here was the handling error, and a big one as well from Sandel. And Musha was never likely to waste that. Not too many gifts in this sport when they are presented like that. You have to gobble them up. Lucia certainly did. And a look of concern again etched on the face of Monier Illich. But we've seen this before, notably in the first half. Magdeburg had three separate three goal cushions. They've now got a minor lead of two. But having been tit for tat started to change but that could all shift again indeed it does sorted home by Piarki Ellison first real look at him tonight consummate finish from uh, Piarki Ellison who Spent so long in the Bundesliga. Magnussen, again, Horn staying very wide. And paint on his shoes. Smarterson, there's Jensen, but it will be a seven metre throw. Fabregas pleading his innocence, but the officials there minding what he did, stepping across and in doing so, stepping inside that seven. That six meter area. Fabregas continues to say, What did I do wrong? 
So Veshbrem missed a couple at that end of the court. Two seven-meter throws spurned in the first half. And now Fabregas gets his two-minute suspension, having already seen Remili befall a similar fate. Here's why there. Just didn't get out of the way once the opposition player was trying to shoot. Speaking of trying to shoot, it's Omar Magnusson from seven meters. Yes, Magdeburg do what Veshbrem couldn't manage. Omar Magnusson now has a hat-trick of second-half goals. And suddenly, Bennett Viga can begin to see potentially a quarter-final berth on the horizon, an automatic spot. Not necessarily because it's two-goal cushion this early in the second half, but because Veshbrem has started to lose their discipline. Spate of two-minute suspensions. It's got Illich bent over, almost down on his haunches. It's a miss from Remy Lee. now for Veshbrim is they have to begin to take chances with the empty goal because they are down to six we need the 6v6 here plus that seventh player Sergei Hernandez who has proven a fall in their side the Magdeburg goalkeeper thus far Eldera with all the time in the world to finish it off yeah, yeah Eldera he took a heavy fall there in completing the finish but he did what was required of him and he's also scored three since the resumption. The home crowd booing now because they felt that wasn't necessarily an honest attempt to stop him from scoring. Felix Clark trying to clear the air. But he has now been sanctioned with a two-minute suspension. So with 66 remaining of Fabregas's two-minute suspension, now Clark goes off for a couple of minutes himself. And we're about to see why Yeah, he held it up. was off the ground, was shooting. And it is incumbent upon the player to actually get out of the way to stop that exact eventuality that a player is knocked off balance when they are at their most vulnerable in the air. And that was a heavy fall for Yeh he held it out, albeit. It's a sweep. The sweetness was the fact that he scored, found the net. Getting Veshrim back to within one. No stage tonight, they really built a lead, unlike Magdeburg, but what they have done well is hang tough, gritted their teeth, stayed in sight of their opponents, hoping that they can rally or perhaps produce a charge late on. Madison, Magnusson has got away and found Musha. There's Jensen, and that elicited a huge cheer there, unsurprisingly, because Jensen's statistics have been boosted in this second half. And how he's looked to play a transform. This was very much advantage Matthias Musha because he was so close to the goal, and yet with a big star jump from Jensen made himself massive, and it was. The full extension of that left arm, which eventually played the all-important role in keeping it out. And now a chance to equalise here for Veshbrem. Yes, Sandel does exactly that. And we're all tied up again. 21 each, Lucas Sandel. It's more like it from Sandel. Hasn't done a lot, the right back, but that was a nifty step inside. Magnussen on the drive towards the line, they've lost control of it again. And Ye held it out with an empty goal to give Veshbrem the second half lead. And how he's turning on the style in this second half. Yehi Eldera now has four goals in this second half alone. Oh, Veshbrem's eight all told. And whilst he was a little quiet in the scoring since in the opening 30 minutes, since we came back out for this second half, he has also stepped up his play. It's Jensen and Eldera in particular for Veshbrem that are turning things around. Hornke slots it home. Magdeburg equalise. 
Tim Horn can finally come into the fore. How quiet has he been? He's barely seen the ball at all. He's had to be very patient down on this near side. Tim Hornke, when his chance came along, showed that he was fresh and above all lucid. Had all the time to step inside there because the player who was supposed to narrow the angle had lost his footing. But that was Pesh Malbec feeding Yael Dedar. Remini hears the whistle just in time. To the final quarter of the match, yeah, he held it ah, this time it's saved by Hernandez. That was a good save away to his left. And it was the form player in El Dira. Omar Magnusson. Far back amongst us now, he served his two minute suspension. That was a fake to shoot. Hornker for two and two, yes. Suddenly he's found a bit of form. Once he was given a bit of the ball, Tim Hornker. And the pendulum swings back the way of Magdeburg. And that certainly helped from Hernandez. And Hornker did the rest. Ready lead. Sandel again looking for another goal. He was impeded. He's saying it should be a seven metre throw. The official saying that he was pulled down sooner than that. Went outside six metre area. Who was right? Sandel. Did well to get the shot away, but again, they're isolating him there. Good robust defending from Magdeburg. Nedim Rimili, Pirouette, Sandel. Sergei Hernandez with the save. Wasn't the cleanest connection with the shot. Now, timeout called by Veshbrem, who do trail by one goal, 23 to 22. And we're going to hear from Momo Illich. How many passes? It's not passive. Lula, go full of Sullivan and make cross for Luke. Okay, it's good. Wait, full, wait, fake wait, timing wait, with wait a cross. A this is the timing. Now you wait a lot. After that, if it's not, let's play for key uh, some situation finger. That's fair. Okay, I. Guys, Mark, you change after. Every time we won one on one, they cross. Look at inside. There's two against two yeah, always. Get out of here. Get out of here. Well, it was a big golf between the two goalkeepers in the first half. Hernandez was way beyond 30% save rate. Jensen was way down, but he's now almost even things out. Despite that, the scoreline is still very similar to what it was. Jensen now has nine saves from 32 shots at 28.1%. As you can see there, Sergei Hernandez, a perfect third. One in every three shots is being repelled. So still 5% difference between the pair, which might constitute that one goal cushion that Magdeburg enjoy over Veshbrem but it's the home side with the ball Remili for Sandel there's Hernandez again staking his claim a big claim for man of the match perhaps shooting from a little bit too far out at times Veshbrem Clark Magdeburg now have that two goal cushion back Felix Clark a while since Veshbrem found the net. A bit of doubt perhaps creeping into them. They are up against the holders of this competition, lest we forget. Magdeburg showed resilience to come through in the final four. Prince Barca on penalties in the semi-final and extra time against Kielsa in the final at Lanxess Arena. How they want to go back and properly defend their trophy. Barca were able to successfully defend the Champions League. It doesn't happen very often. But Veshbrem didn't make the most of these in the first half, so they called for Coltamay. Still very popular in this part of the world. 
long-serving Frenchman. Maé needs to score. Maé doesn't score. It's Sergei Hernandez again. How he's coming up big, time and again tonight. Very limited contribution already for Quentin May, and he came on with big pressure on that, but he bought to the pressure. Hernandez stayed tall. And I believe that is three attempts from the seven-meter line, and that have all got a right. And Magdeburg can now extend their lead here with Magnussen. Clark keeps it moving. Clark spotted space, he slots it in. What a lovely finish there from Felix Clark with a spin shot. And Magdeburg are really taking charge of proceedings now. Felix Clark, seven goals from eight attempts, but more than that, he scored each of their last two, and he's ably supported by the goalkeeping, the reflexes, and the sheer presence that Hernandez has between the sticks. We're into the final ten. Feshbrem needs to overcome a three-goal deficit. They start that by Kosonatov thumping one home. Reminder off the stakes. Magdeburg had 22 points to Veshbrem's 20, which means even a draw here for Magdeburg would be enough to book their place directly in the quarterfinals of the MachineSeeker.com EHF Champions League. They would not have to go via a playoff round. Anyone who finishes outside the top two does so. So the onus is on Veshbrem to win, and therefore they need to first and foremost overcome this two-goal deficit and then press ahead. Time is against them. And the crowd have gone a little bit quiet. This is when they need the most, the Hungarian side. We need to hear from the 5,000 strong inside Veszprém Arena. And very much outnumbering the Magdeburg supporters, understandably, drowning them out. Smarason, Hornke. This stage of the match, Magdeburg will try and, yes, score, but also take their time in scoring so as to afford Feshpen less time to hit them back. It's a painful one there. And plenty of collisions tonight. And Smarason is causing real problems because he's so diminutive and so quick. Here's uh, Janis Smarason, brought in from Kolstad when Christensen was injured. And he's on to Veshpen's rivals, actually, Pit Seged at the end of the season. There's the Kemper, there's the save, though, from Jensen. Came in with huge height there, did Clark. He's trying to close in towards double figures, not so on this occasion, because Jensen stepped forward off his line. Almost in the face of Clark by the time he got the shot away. Spectacular handball there. Not often you see a Kemper come clattering back with even more speed than was initially imparted, but such was the save. Stolen away from Bergendahl, but the whistle had gone. Mama Ilic disagreeing with the decision. Magdeburg call a timeout with just over eight minutes remaining. The timeout has been and gone. Magdeburg are where they would want to be. The result is in their hands. Much true to 
to the heroics of that man, Sergei Hernandez, who's pushing almost 40% now with his save success rate. It's up to 38, and that has been the difference between the two teams. Magnussen just clipped the outside of the post on the way through there. It was a brush off a red shirt. Vosprin tried to grab the ball back. Magdeburg now know that they have to shoot sooner rather than later. How many passes have they got here? Given away by Musha. Did well there, yeah, he held it out because had he stepped inside there, that would have been a penalty throw. Instead, he was off the ground when he handled the ball. This is Agustin Casado. That was wasteful from Musha. You could see what he was trying. He didn't legislate for that fabulous piece of athleticism to grab the ball and then relinquish it while still in the air. Now Magdeburg have gone more than three minutes since their last score. Vesprin ticking towards that similar mark themselves. They need to score, they don't score. Again, it's Hernandez. That was a tame effort from Remy Lee, given just what an accomplished player he is. Long way back, that shot. Didn't really have to crouch nor dive, it was just a case of keeping his eye on the ball. Magnussen. There's Clark again. Clark has top scored for Magdeburg. It's still tense for Bennett Vigo. Would do that even if they had four goal lead rather than two. Clark, it's another goal for him. It's a personal battle between him and his goalkeeper as to who wants to be player of the match. The lead is up to three. Felix Clark, eight goals from ten attempts. First sprint take their third and final time out. Put a pivot here, drag it here, Ludo is there. Okay, he start here, there are you are in. 7-6 situation. He starts here from 1-2. Uh, okay. After that, let's try change to 5-1. Nothing happened. 5-1. There are you are in front. You are in front. Draghi, you are second. Okay. Miguel, you rest. Ludo is out. He don't need. Just push and run it. Okay. Now we are throwing and you're not that good. We have to run. Go. Everybody I, focus. We have one defense to run back. Okay. Hey, hey, let's go. Push, hey, push. Get out of here. Right there. Right they mix things up now with the 5-1, but also they have to start taking chances with the 7-on-6 because they trail by three goals here. Telecom Veshpren, the home side, the team that have to win tonight if they are to leapfrog Magdeburg and qualify for the quarterfinals without going via a playoff. Magdeburg in the box seat. They are the reigning champions in this competition. They're showing exactly why. Amazing to think they lost their first two matches against Veshpren at home and then at Barca. That's the difference tonight. 28% for Mike Jensen. Not bad by any means, 38% is a whopping tally for Sergei Hernandez, who has got Magdeburg on the cusp here of winning this 12th match in a row, but he could do nothing about that. But then Magdeburg score, Jensen couldn't get back, their goal was in vain. Agustin Casado scored for Veszprem. Thumbs up from Magnus Salström. Sado's finish was good, but then Sergei Hernandez found Salstrup, and that was much more accomplished than what they managed in the first half. When Hernandez himself shot and shot errantly. It's another goal for Veshbrem. This time Jensen has got back in time. Back down to two. Yeah, he held it up. All about his goals in the second half and kept Veshbrem in touch, despite how well Sergei Hernandez has played. Jensen's let it get beneath him. 
how costly that could prove. Horn for the strike. 28-25, Magdeburg again. Three clear here, Tim Hornker once more. Four minutes, they trail by three, Veshbrem. It looks a forlorn task. It's not impossible, but it's becoming increasingly difficult. It's already very taxing. Yael Dera moving on for Agustin Casado. Was being held there was Fabregas. But what a display this is for Magdeburg. Coming to this fierce, fiery atmosphere. Veshbrem Arena taking the game to Veshbrem and seemingly taking their spot directly in the quarter-finals. Oh, nearly came away with it for a one-on-one -on -one against Jensen. Casado, it has to go in. They need to start shooting quickly as well. It's not just they need to score, they need to score quickly and they need a flurry of goals, Fresh Brent. Who's going to step up? Yeah, Eldera tries again, Hernandez makes the save. Good attempt there from Fabregas, that's all he could do, is dive forward and try and pat it into the net. But Hernandez has the ball, Magdeburg have the lead, and Magdeburg seemingly have that spot all tied up in Group B, in the top two. Double save in the end from Hernandez to make sure that Fabregas's creative finish wasn't a successful one. Smarters and they can take their time in possession now. Magnussen for Klar. His goals have also tipped the scales, tipped the balance the way of Magdeburg. Passive play now. They know what they're doing though. This is all about letting the seconds tick down. They will eventually shoot. They do. is stopped on 27 minutes and 36 seconds the shot does come in Felix Klar that might just do it who's going to top score tonight he celebrates towards the bench nine from 11 is really impressive from him and now the lead is up to four and Illich now knows that if Veshbrem are to make it through to the final four they're going to have to do it the hard way going via the playoff round Fabregas does bag a goal an element of pride, but it does feel that it's going to be a little too beyond them now. Move it, Fabregas brings them back to within three, but with fewer than two minutes remaining. It's almost mathematically impossible. It will require Magdeburg to completely lose their heads here. They're not going to do that with Smarterson. In fact, they score. And that is now 30 goals for Magdeburg tonight. Janus Smarterson again. And it did prompt a big roar of celebration from Bennett Viga. And Jensen just allowing a little bit too much space between the legs. And that's Bennett Viga acknowledging that his team have done enough. They have surged away in this second half. Fabregas gets his second consecutive score, but they're no longer celebrating these goals. They know that they won't essentially matter into the final minute we go. Ludovic Fabregas has still taken seven from eight. But it was... Above all, about one man tonight, Sergei Hernandez, who's going to be player of the match for his display, for his ability to keep denying Telecom Veshbrem. Musha can't add a layer of gloss, it catches the underside of the crossbar. Magdeburg will try and repel Veshbrem again here, who wants to pull to within two goals. And those Magdeburg supporters, there aren't many of them, but they've made the trip from Germany. And it's a successful one for them. They will be automatically through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. They'll be one step away from again being at the final four where they triumphed last year. Yael Dera denied. Fabregas. Hernandez got something on it, but it goes in. But 10 seconds remain. Veshrem are two goals behind. And Magdeburg prepare to celebrate their 12th consecutive win in the Champions League. Bennett Viga gets the better of Momir Ilic. The Vesprem home fans will go home unhappy because of a sterling display from Sergei Hernandez in goal for Magdeburg. 
ably supported by the goals of Felix Klar, but this is a real force in the game of European handball. They are the Champions League holders for a reason. It was too little, too late for Vesprem in the second half. It was 14 each at the break. Vesprem chipped in with the same number of goals in the second half, but Magdeburg eventually just had too much. And it was a tale of two goalkeepers. Sergei Hernandez, the better of the two custodians, and he guides Magdeburg into the top two in Group B. It finishes here at Vesprem Arena. Telecom Vesprem 28, Magdeburg 30. Confirmation of what we knew already, Sergei Hernandez is the player of the match. You need a big goalkeeping performance if you are to win tight matches such as these, and Magdeburg had that tonight in the shape of the Spaniard. It's he who gets the individual award, but the team get the prize of a bye into the quarterfinals. They were too strong tonight. And it feels a world away September when they lost their first two rounds in the Champions League, but group phase has since bowed to the will of the holders, the reigning champions, and they will be again one of the favourites, surely, to go on and win the competition this time around. Can they defend it as Barca did two years prior to Magdeburg claiming their fourth title? Veshprem will be involved in the playoff, and it's Magdeburg's night tonight. One final look at the statistics, which prove the dominance of the German side. We'll leave you again with the final score. It is finished here. Telecom Veshprem 28, Magdeburg 30. Felix, congratulations. It was a very, very tough game, as expected, and you've managed to win it with a two-goal margin. What do you think were the key factors in your in your order for today's win? Yeah, uh, big win for us, important. We know uh, it was a quarter-final in the, in the, in the pot, and I think we played a, a calm game. We, we didn't stress uh, for the crowd or something. We just stay calm and uh, play good. What do you think about today's opponent? Because Vesprem can play better than today. How hard did you find to break uh, Vesprem's defense today? Yeah, it was really hard. They are big guys in the middle and they play very aggressive. So you need to, to try to find something special uh, to score. So it's hard. And lastly, please, uh, for your native supporters, could you sum up uh, the game with your native language, just in a short sentences? Yeah. Um, Fantastic season opening here in Vesperm. Uh, ah, victory match, quarter final for Spiel, and we'll be able to So fantastic, really. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs>
Yeah, it was a very tough game and uh, it was expected, but what made this game so tough? Uh, was it something in Magdeburg's play today that surprised you or it just wasn't the day? Uh, it's just not the, not the day. The flow was going a little bit uh, good in the beginning. Uh, in the end, when you play strong games, it, it's a roller coaster. It keeps go, uh, going uh, ups and downs. Uh, we didn't use our chances uh, well. Things didn't go uh, in our way. Uh, we missed a lot of shots, so we we cannot say anything. In the end, you played, you played good. You fought until the end. We were playing against a really strong team, so we still have our chances. One game, uh, lesson learned, and we're gonna think about everything about this game, and we're gonna use it in the future for sure. Well, there is just uh, the two games against Pixaget in order to qualify to the quarterfinals. So. That was the that was at stake today. What do you think about this group phase altogether? Yeah, okay. We're playing in the Champions League, one of the highest levels in the world. So uh, there is no easy games. You have to fight until the end. You have uh, to expect uh, everything in sports. Anything can happen. Uh, we had a good flow. We had confidence in ourselves. But this was a good test, and this was something that we need to look uh, look for to bring our level back and come back with a better performance next time. And lastly, please, for your home supporters, sum up the game in a few words in Egyptian language. Ah, shokran, shokran uh, for your support. Uh, inshallah, we will win. Inshallah, we will re we'll reach Final Four. Thank you very much.